Hello, Edwin Jones here with the Lenore City Church of Christ and I'm going to be doing a redo on a Bible class I did last night where our, uh, we had equipment failures, but this is going to be sort of a central class and understanding that we will be referring back to and expanding. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're talking about going from the Gospels to evangelism. Uh, I've been studying on Wednesday night, uh, as, as many of you will know, uh, from Matthew. We've been doing that in our daily Bible readings, which are going to continue. And uh, Jesse is doing some lessons on Sunday nights, summarizing what we do in our daily Bible reading. So I'm, I'm transitioning from the study of Matthew into evangelism. And so in doing that, I want to explain something about what's up with that. What I am seeking to do with this is to show the Bible's plan of personal evangelism. In Churches of Christ, for those of you who don't know, uh, we want to be restorationists is the way we often put it. We want to go back to the Bible and we want to see what the church was intended to be and we want to be that today. And one of the areas that unfortunately gets neglected even among restorationists is what the Bible has to say about evangelism, and in particular what we often call personal evangelism. And coming out of a study of the Gospels is perfect for getting into this because the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, take up almost 50% of New Testament space. And they all talk about Jesus. In fact, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called synoptic Gospels because they cover much of the same territory. So God in his wisdom of coming forth with this uh, messianic kingdom with the church uh, decided to give the church a, a book, if you will, a covenant, if you will, that starts out with about 50% of it talking about Jesus and aspects, snapshots of his daily life. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because in Romans 8 and 29, we have what I'm going to call our, our primary objective. We find there that who God knew, he predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. It's always been God's intention as he went through time, getting to the messianic kingdom, to when he got there, having the people in it being conformed to the image of Jesus. Hence, we can understand why half of the New Testament is an intimate look at Jesus in everyday life situations, uh, among some other things, but certainly a lot having to do with that. Now, that said, uh, we want to understand that our job, our commitment, our, what we're getting into as disciples in following Jesus is to be transformed into his image. It's a beautiful, it's a wonderful plan we try to come up with shortcut substitutes, but we don't want to do that with anything that God does. And so let's think just a minute about this. In anything that a Christian would be expected to be involved in, the number one model, the person we could look to to see it best, would be Jesus. If we ask ourselves, who was the best personal evangelist? It wouldn't be Paul, it would be Jesus. Paul would get upset if we said it was him. He would say, no, 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 I'm following Jesus. Uh, if we want to be benevolent in the Jesus way, well, Jesus would show us that. Where would be the best place to look at what compassion looks like, what kindness looks like? It'd be Jesus, courage, Jesus. Confrontation when needed, which is rare, but nevertheless part of the Christian life, Jesus. So knowing Jesus, getting a feel for his life so that we can be transitioned, transformed into his image is so important. God made us in his image so that we'd be image bearers and the image that we're to bear as Christians is the image of Christ. So uh, we can go then from the gospels into evangelism, but let's go that way by going into the epistles. The part of the New Testament that deals with the Christian's life corporately, individually, daily, that would be the epistles. And if you just start out and read through the epistles or just glance through them, you will find Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, Lord, Son, Son of God, a variety of things 
that are talking about Jesus. Now, let's suppose you got a copy of the epistles and you didn't know anything from the Gospels. You really didn't know anything about Jesus. You just get the epistles. You're going to figure out he's pretty important and you can surmise some of the things about his life that were critical. But the epistles assume a gospel's knowledge of Jesus. Because how are we going to be transformed into the image of Christ, which the epistles take up in many different ways, if we have not had that picture of Jesus that we find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Well, we couldn't. So they, they work together. Now, the book of Acts is going to enter into this in a very special way, sort of a transition. When the church started, the first sermon in Acts sets us on an odyssey through to the end of the book as the church begins to expand outward with this messianic mission. Jesus had said in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, make disciples. That's the command of the commission. And we do that as we are going and as we're baptizing and as we're teaching whatsoever Jesus has commanded. But the command is to make disciples, make followers of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, when we have the first sermon preached about Jesus, people come to accept that he's the Messiah and they're pierced in their heart and they want to know what do we do. They are told to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins and, and they'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what do they do after the fact? Well, we find out in verses 41 and 42 of Acts 2 that as many as received the word were baptized. As many as took Simon Peter's answer of what to do to follow Jesus, that's what they would do. They would eventually be baptized. Hence the Great Commission has that as part of being a disciple. And what do they do in verses 41 and 42? Well, those who received the word were baptized and they begin devoting themselves to the apostles' doctrine. What is that all about? Well, let's go to the epistles and kind of plug into that for just a minute. They're devoting themselves to the apostles' doctrine. What, what is that all about? In Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, we find out as Jesus gave gifts to men, verses 8 and 9, as he gave the Holy Spirit, as we read about in Acts 2, and as we will see all through the book of Acts, doing the work that it was doing in the early church, that as that was, was going on, what are people supposed to do with it? And so 11 through 16 of Ephesians talks about various particularly pertinent and significant offices in the early church, we have two of them surviving today, that were given these things. <coughs> And what was their job when they got these things? To equip the saints for the work of service. So when a person becomes a Christian, they're to be equipped for the work of service. What did they do when they received the word and were added to the church? They devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine. What would the apostles' doctrine do? It would equip them for the work of service. It's patterned after Jesus as we read on through. And finally, we get to the point where a new convert who would be unschooled and undisciplined in the things of Jesus who would not have reached maturity for sure but needed to be taught these things and equipped for the work of service. They were not to remain as children because they'd be vulnerable but speaking the truth in love they were to grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ. And when that happened they could then work with each other in, in good ways that which every joint supplies the proper working of each individual part. So uh, the mission that God has always envisioned is that we be conformed to the image of Christ. The apostles were given the information about Jesus and his church, and when people decided that they wanted to be disciples, they immediately plugged them into those teachings and to equip them for the work of service, and the work of service had to do with their conformity to Christ. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because we've already talked about who could do better than Jesus in any work or anything at all that has to do with Christianity? And the answer would be Jesus. So if we're looking for a personal evangelism program, and we ought to be because God has one, he's invested a lot in it, but as we look for that personal evangelism program, what does it look like? It looks like what we're talking about. It takes longer. There are quick fixes that don't fix anything that actually mess things up. Uh, to get people out on the street and going through a program to tell them about Jesus. That's not the Bible program. The Bible program for personal evangelism has a name. It's called, are you ready for this? Christianity. Because you see, evangelism is for people who have grown up 
They're not like children. They're mature. And they have grown up to maturity in Jesus so they can go about representing him. In 1 Peter 3.15, we find that we're to sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts so we'll be able to give an answer to anyone who asks us concerning the hope that lies within us yet with meekness and reverence. Why would anybody be asking us about the hope that lies within us? They've seen that we live in compatibility with the hope that we have in Jesus. They can see, as was noticed in the apostles when they were told to stop preaching and wondered how these uneducated people could be out talking about Jesus in the powerful way that they were. He took note of them that they had been with Jesus. And so my Jesus self is my evangelistic self. It's my everything self. But it is certainly my personal evangelism self. And as I'm conformed to his image, I can go about representing him as an image bearer in the image of God and the image of Christ, provoking questions and seeding conversations as I scatter the seed, hoping to find someone who will want to talk about Jesus. And, and then, because I've grown up, as the New Testament tells me I am supposed to do in any number of ways, uh, Hebrews 5, uh, 12 through 14 uh, is astounded, the Hebrews writer is to some extent, that the people are still needing milk and not the meat of the word because the meat of the word for those who, who had practiced, who had exercised their senses to discern good from evil and they had grown up to maturity. God wants us to go out as increasingly mature individuals to handle the things of the day. So let's, let's get the Acts thing back. In Acts, it's been my experience in Churches of Christ that when we want to have a personal evangelism class, we go to the book of Acts. It's a good book. We can learn some things about becoming a Christian there. It's a great study, but that's not where we ought to think about going when we're talking about a personal evangelism class. We ought to be going to the epistles because the epistles are the instruction given to Christians about how they should behave. If you will, instructions about personal evangelism from God's point of view, from transformation into Christ's likeness point of view. In fact, what do we find in the book of Acts? We find largely people speaking to crowds who either haven't heard the full story of Jesus who, or who haven't heard about him at all. Most of us will not have an opportunity to speak to a large crowd who has not heard all that much about Jesus or nothing at all. It's just not what we in our culture deal with. Uh, so that's a great book. We learn some amazing things, some faith fortifying things. But when we learn about what we're going to be doing as uh, everyday folks, we're going to find that in the epistles. Uh, you may have seen Band of Brothers, uh, net edited network version, of course. Uh, and, and they have they land on the beaches at Normandy, and the Germans are behind the beaches. And so they're going to establish an aptly named beachhead, a staging area from which they can work to go out and conquer the territory that lies beyond. The church that we see being established all throughout the Mediterranean world in the book of Acts are the beachheads for the invasion of Jesus into the world. And so that church becomes a group of people that are being discipled, that are growing up in all things into him who is the head Christ, who are learning to work together with that which every joint supplies, the proper working of each individual part for the growth of the body in love. So every congregation of Jesus' church is a beachhead in foreign territory, and they are a staging area for going out and conquering in Jesus' name, and they do that by being transformed into the image of Christ, taking their Jesus selves out and about, provoking conversations, showing the light of God's truth in Jesus that the world can see in its darkness, and there will be those who are attracted to it, and Christians will have prepared themselves to be able to handle that. In fact, we saw in Acts 2 those people who uh, were uh, devoting themselves to the apostles' doctrine, which we see was to bring people to maturity in, in Jesus. Within two years in Acts 8, 4, we read about that the saints were scattered abroad from Jerusalem. They were scattered away from the apostles that had been mentoring them and showing them and teaching them. And they are scattered everywhere. Now, when they did that, within a two-year period of time, they didn't throw their hands up. They went about preaching the word because they had been brought to maturity in Jesus. And 
under hostile circumstances in environments that they were unfamiliar with, they could go about and talk about Jesus. Most of these people were illiterate. They didn't have any of the resources that we have today. If they could be expected to reach that point and go out and do that in a relatively short period of time, what would be our problem with doing that? And, and the problem would be us because it isn't anything in the system. This is God's plan for personal evangelism. This is God's plan for church growth. And so uh, the individual Christian learns about Jesus in the Gospels, applies that to a Christian situation in the church where they are equipped for the work of service and, and they go out doing these things. So that is God's personal evangelism plan. And here in Lenore City, we're going to be working to improve ourselves with that and let the model that the Bible gives us, the inspired Jesus-centered model for personal evangelism and everything else, increasingly become the model that we follow as we grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, as we are equipped for the work of service, which involves personal evangelism, but everything else as well. So we will be looking at this in more detail. We'll be referring to it in the Wednesday night classes that we have. And so this is a, a, something that you can refer to from time to time to get the overview of what we're up to. And what I believe we're up to is up to God's business His way as found in the New Testament. And I invite you to join with us if you're in the area. Come see us at Lenore City Church of Christ. If not, stay tuned and let's study about God's ways in the church together.